All right, let's start off on number two here. So on this one, um, we this is what we call vertex form here. Uh, it makes it very easy to find the vertex. Um, and as the instructions say right here, uh, find the vertex by switching the sign of the number inside the parentheses. So in this case, my x value is going to be negative 2. You just always switch that sign right there. Um, we kind of understand this as being a shift left 2, and so that applies to the vertex there. Um, so then this one back here, uh, we are just going to put over here as negative 3. Um, it does say that you want to keep the sign of the number outside. Um, so this one would, would be a shift down 3, um, which would give us that negative 3 at the vertex. So really easy to find the vertex here, and then we'll go ahead and just graph it. So I'm going to put it right there. Um, you can draw your, uh, your axis of symmetry here, uh, just a vertical line through the vertex. And then um, the y-intercept is actually a little more difficult to find. For the y-intercept, we're going to plug in 0 for x and evaluate. So I'm just going to plug in 1, or sorry, not 1, 0, plus 2 squared, minus 3. So I just have to follow my PEMDAS here. So i got to do the parentheses first. And then I have to do the exponent. And I don't have any multiplying, so I do the, the subtracting. And that is my y-intercept is going to be at positive 1. So it's going to be right there. And I'll just draw my matching point on the other side of the axis of symmetry there. And then we'll connect these and make our uh, parabola there. All right, same thing for number four uh, down here. So for this one, um, I'm going to go ahead and just once again switch the, uh, the signs here for the... Uh, for the vertex, so on the inside, that's going to become a positive 1, just the opposite of what you would think. And then this one's going to stay as a positive 2 because on the outside, we do not change that sign. Um, and then, so I can graph that, that'll be right there for my vertex. Um, once again, I can draw my axis of symmetry down the middle. And then uh, I'll find my y-intercept here. So for this one, it would be negative 2 parentheses 0 minus 1 squared plus 2. Uh, got to do our parentheses first. Then we got to do our exponent. And then we got to do our multiplication. And then last, we have our addition. And so it does add up to 0. So I have a y-intercept at 0, which will be right there at the origin. Um, you can think of it like I plugged in 0 for x, and I got out 0 for y, so that's why it's on the origin there. And I can draw my matching uh, point on the other side of the axis of symmetry, and just draw our parabola going down. All right, next set here, we just want to describe the transformations. So um, it's kind of kind of going along the same thing as the, the same lines as the vertex form. Just describe this as technically we should call it a shift. Um, and it is to the right 2. Uh, we have the plus 5 out back will be a shift up 5, which would affect the vertex. Um, we always switch the sign for the one inside. And then this one right here has the effect of a vertical shrink. Any fraction multiplying out front is going to shrink it out vertically. Um, so there you go. Next up, number 8. Um, so this one really only has this minus 11 out back as compared to the original x squared. And so this is going to shift it um, down by 11. Uh, it's not in parentheses, so it's not left or right. And when it's up or down, if it's minus, it's down. Plus is up. All right, next up, number 10. So this one, we have this plus 1 in here. And that is going to be a shift uh, to the right one. Uh, the inside adding or subtracting is uh, left or right, opposite way you would think. Then we kind of have a th negative here. And then we also have the 3. Um, I really want to look at those separately. So either order you want, the negative multiplying out front will always be a reflection. And uh, if it's outside, it'll always be across the x-axis. So that's what we're going to see here. Um, and the 3 out front multiplying will be a vertical sh uh, stretch. If it's a number uh, greater than 1, it's going to be a sh uh, stretch. Right, next up here, they want us to state the max or the min value. Um, so that's always talking about the y value of the vertex. So I do have to find the vertex here. Um, and, oh, it also asks whether it has a max or a min. So first of all, um, this one has a max. And I just know that 
because uh, a is negative. Anytime a is negative, it is a max. You can think of it like an upside down parabola. We have that reflection. So the vertex is the highest point. So now I need to find the vertex. So I'm gonna find the x, out, uh, x value of the vertex first. So that's negative b over 2a. I got my numbers up there in order. So negative b will be negative three over two times negative one. Uh, a is negative 1 here, it's the number in front of x squared, so that'll be negative 3 over negative 2, which is really just 3 over 2. Um, and now I'll plug that back in to find my y value. I'm going to need some more space for that, hold up. Okay, uh, so I got to plug this in um, for every x in the original function there, so that'll be 3 over 2 squared uh, plus 3 times 3 over 2 plus 2. Got to do PEMDAS here, so I'm going to do the exponent first. Uh, so you want to think of this negative as a negative 1, and that's a multiplier. So uh, I'm going to do the exponent first, so that's going to be 9 over 4, squaring the top and the bottom. And then we're going to uh, multiply. So we got a couple things to multiply. This one's going to turn into negative 9 over 4. This one uh, will turn into 9 over 2, top times top of top, bottom times bottom on bottom. And this one is going to be 2 over 1 still. Um, I'm just going to change that to a fraction because i got to do common denominator here. So I'm going to turn everything into 4. Uh, so I get negative 9 over 4 plus 18 over 4 uh, plus 8 over 4. Um, and we just add all that up. Um, all the numerators, that is, the denominator stays the same. Um, so negative 9 plus 8 is positive 9 plus 8 is 17 over 4. And so that's my answer for part B. And then... Um, so part C then, the domain and range. Domain is always, for parabolas, all real numbers. Um, goes left and right forever. Uh, but we kind of want to think of this uh, vertex right there at being at the y value of 17 comma 4. So that means all of our y values are underneath that. And so for the range, I would say that y is less than, it's underneath, or equal to 17 over 4. All right, next up, number 14. So this one we want to factor. Um, so I don't, there's no GCF in this case. So I'm just going to go, since it's a trinomial, into my x. Uh, so we're going to do a times c on top and b on bottom. So this is going to be 36 and 13. So thinking about what make, multiplies make 36, I know I have 2 and 18. I got 3 and 12, but that's not going to add to 13. I do have 4 and 9, and so that will work adding up to that 13. And so now, since we have the six out front, we have to uh, use our grouping technique here, or the box. Uh, the inside out box, but I prefer the, the grouping technique here, so we're gonna split these up, 9x plus 4x, the order does not matter. And then I put um, the six out back. All right, so now we gotta do our grouping. So I'll group those together, group those two together. We're going to take uh, the GCF out, which will be 3x, leaving me 2x plus 3. And then this group, I can take out a 2, leaving me with 2x plus 3. So then we can factor it 3x plus 2 times 2x plus 3, and we are done. If you ever want to check that, you can always do a FOIL or outside inbox to check it out. So I'll go ahead and do that. Um, so we'll do 3x plus 2, and 2x plus 3, so I get 6x squared, uh, 4x, 9x, and 30, oh, this is plus 2, uh, so it'll be 6. Um, so you can see that we that was part of our original equation here. We have 6x squared right there, and then these two add up to 13x, and then that gives you the 6 back there. So that means this answer uh, checks out. All right, next up here, um, we're going to do factoring by grouping. So this first group, I can take out 4m squared, and that leaves me with m plus 1. And then the second group, it doesn't look like I can take out anything, but when that happens, I always want to take out a 1 or a negative 1. In this case, I'll take out a negative 1, which will leave me with that same m plus 1. So I can... Uh, put that as one of my parentheses, and then the next parentheses is for the everything outside, so 4m squared minus 1. Um, now, in this case, I actually see that I can break this one down further because it's the difference of perfect squares. I can just take the square root of everything, 2m and 1, and just do 1 plus and 1 minus, and uh, 
I can just keep that at the end. This only works when all the numbers in here are perfect squares. Um, and they are subtracting, so that's why I could do it in this case. It's not always uh, available. All right, next up here, uh, we have a standard form here. So this is not vertex form. So we have to actually find the vertex. So I'm going to use my x equals negative b over 2a. Uh, so that's 8 over 4, and that'll be uh, 2. Uh, once again, that's negative b over 2a that I use there. Um, so that's the x value of my vertex, and I have to plug that in to find the y value. So I'm just going to plug it in for every x in the function. Uh, got to do exponents first, and then we'll do our multiplication, and then we'll do our addition. So this will be negative 8 plus 5, and that'll be negative 3. So I got my vertex at 2 comma negative 3. That'll be right there. Uh, my y-intercept on these is really easy to see. Um, it's just always C. It's out back, so put it right there. Um, and then we'll just, uh, oh, with the axis of symmetry, we'll just match that y-intercept with another point over here in blue. And then we'll make our parabola.